there we are, my friends. We finally got ourselves the Master Mode exclusive drop for the Dookie Boy. We've got the Pork of the Sea. There it is. We done got it. We can finish off the display area for Duke Fish Run. But before we do anything else, of course, we do have the lore item to check out for Duke Fish Run. Outlandish as they may seem, this species is the single mightiest of the seas. They are relentless hunters and can easily spend significant time out of the water. Folklore holds that the fish runs claim heritage from the true dragons countless years back. While there are many such tales of creatures of draconic descent, this case is factual. Genetic heritage or not though, the fish runs lack dragon blood or auric souls. I would well know. <laughs> Alright, so in it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Dookie Boy taken care of. So welcome back here to another episode here of the modded playthrough back for episode 34. Once again pre-recording because I've got a bunch of holidays coming up and I'm pre-recording and bulk recording these episodes. So you guys still have content coming out to you even while I am away my friends. So hopefully you're okay with that. The only downsides of course again as I mentioned is the fact that uh, yeah the comments of the days are a little bit delayed and are not able to action a lot of what you guys are probably saying in the comments area. But believe me, once I do get back from my holidays and I can get back up to date with you folks, then uh, yeah, rest assured, we're probably going to have like a mega episode where we just go through a bunch of your guys' comments that you have left since the last up-to-date episode, which I think for me is like episode 31. At the time of me recording this, episode 31 has only just gone out, so that should give you some idea as to how far ahead I am. But anyways, check this out, my friends. I was checking out my void bag, and it actually turns out I've got some upgraded wings, which I didn't even know were there. 7.75 horizontal speed, 1.5 multiplier, flight time 150. So yeah, that's not bad. It is a marginal upgrade over the flame wings, but the only thing that lets it down is the flight time. But then again, we have six Duke Fish on treasure bags, right? What if... Whoa! Duke's Decapitator, 149 rogue damage. I didn't even know that was a thing. Holy moly. We're looking for the fish run wings, and there they are. Eight horizontal speed, two acceleration multiplier, 180 flight time. That is more like it. And after opening up all the other things, there's not really too much going on. We do have the Briny Baron though. I seem to remember this thing being maybe a legendary weapon of old. I don't know. I feel like this is a legendary weapon, or an ex-legendary weapon anyway. Check out the amount of platinum coins we have back on our person. Excellent. All right. Our money issues are a thing of the past. For now, anyway. <laughs> so there we are, my friends. At long last, Fish Run Wings, a very worthy upgrade, if you ask me. It always is, isn't it? It's always been one of the greatest upgrades to get in vanilla Terraria, let alone modded. You may remember the abomination from previous episodes. We need to go ahead and make this bad boy and give it a bit of a go in the jungle. The good news is we already have a giant arena over in the jungle. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to take down the Plaguebringer Goliath right on over there. So my friends, if you're still excited for the series and want to continue showing your support, then please do be sure to head down below the video. Spend a second to drop a like. I'd really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on my future content. And if you want to go one further with your support, of course, you can use code Python when ordering any of my Apex gaming PCs for 5% off. So then, this actually seems really easy to make. 20 plague cell canisters, any iron bars, so it can be lead as well, and some obsidian. And that's it. That's stupidly simple. Let's friggin' do this. Just like that. Abomination, non-consumable plague bringer Goliath summoner of epicness. <laughs> hey. So real quick, check this out, my friends. Since the last episode, I went ahead and I actually created the endless holy quiver. So we've got endless holy arrows, which is just brilliant. And then, of course, we've got the good old chlorified pouch as well for endless chlorified bullets. So my friends... Let's just do this thing. Let's... Oh, hello there, buddy. How much health have you got? 250,000 did I just see there? A quarter mil? Oh, my word. Okay. This guy seems a little bit on the berserk side. Holy moly. You look way different to uh, how I remember you in the Calamity mod of old. Oh, my word. <laughs> You've got some mad movement speed as well there, Brewski. Let's see how the tsunami fares, actually. I feel like this would be the better way to go. Oh, snap. 
Okay. Okay. So yeah, plenty of different attacks to be learning here, my friendos. I honestly believe that getting rid of the minimap is going to lessen the amount of distractions I have. So, uh, yeah. I am very thankful for having the fish run wings. I have to say, the increased mobility that it gives is just brilliant. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, approaching half health, plague nuke barrage arms preparing for launch. That does not sound good, does it? Okay, genuinely don't know what's going to happen. Oh my word. This guy's gone freaking berserk mode. Hello. Uh, don't really know what's going on, if I'm honest. I'm just kind of hoping for the best there. I really am just winging this while simultaneously trying to... Oh no, go away, go away, go away, you sons of guns. While simultaneously trying to learn his attack patterns, it is difficult to say the least. Holy crap, holy! <laughs> we are so nearly dead here, my friends. So nearly dead. So nearly dead. If we survive this, I'm going to be genuinely surprised. Oh, and there we go. Do you know what? A quarter health on your first go. That's not too bad. So, yeah, I think what we're going to do is actually stick with the Unreal Tsunami. But, and it's a big but, I've got another idea, okay? Some of you guys may know that you can make chlorophyte arrows okay and the reason you might want to make chlorophyte arrows is so that you can have arrows that bounce off of walls by having that we've got a slightly higher chance of the arrows actually hitting the dude right so we need four thousand of these just over four thousand apparently and uh, there we have it endless chlorophyte quiver bounces back after hitting a wall Hmm. Now that sounds like an interesting thing, doesn't it, my friendos? <laughs> so there we are. Unreal Endless Chlorophyte Quiver. Now that sounds more my style. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the 1.4.4 smart bounce mechanic or whatever it's called for the chlorophyte arrows here. We've just got sort of the bog standard old style chlorophyte arrows. I'm still hoping that me using the chlorophyte arrows will do us justice. Whoa! Look at all the projectiles everywhere, dude! Man, do they move at some speed! Wow! Right, okay, the only thing I think I need to do is actually make this into a proper box, because by doing that, I will be able to more easily have all of the projectiles stay within the arena, okay? Alrighty, last little bit of wall to do, and we should have a nice box. We do. And you know what? As much as we're going to have decreased damage, I'd quite like to have all of the defense, to be quite honest. I mean, 770 health as well. I mean, that's just too good to pass up, isn't it? I'd rather we have an endurance fight and maybe have a higher chance of winning rather than having higher damage and lower defense and having a slightly lower chance of winning. That's the way I look at it anyway. Oh, jeez. I'm already kind of failing a little bit here, but uh, no matter. Yeah, we're not doing bad. We're not doing bad here, my friend. Those not doing too bad. Come on. Let's get this thing underway. A little bit of a rage buff. Love to see it. It's when he does that little dash. The first dash. He sort of follows you around and then purposely dashes into you. Is what I've noticed. And we do have to be careful of that. Oh! No! I dodged into him. What a colossal moment! Oh my goodness me! Oh, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's anywhere and everywhere. He's just... Oh, God. He's just on my case the whole time. Gee whiz. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. More. Oh, for God's sake. Hey, guys. Check this out. There's actually an upgrade to the Necro Armor. The Plague Reaper armor. And then if and when we manage to take down the Plague Bringer Goliath, this is a direct upgrade for the B armor. The Plague Bringer armor requires infected armor plating, which is gotten from the Plague Bringer Goliath. There it is. Necro armor. Now, where do we make the upgrade? It is indeed here. Whoa. Okay, so we've got that. we got this. And wait. I cannot make the trousers for some unknown reason. Oh, no. You're going to tell me I need more plague cell canisters, eh? Let's have a look. Yep, you do. Ah. 
Of course, when you're going ahead and doing some grinding, there is no better way to do it than the battle cry. Except maybe the Zerg potion, but, you know, we'll gloss over that. There we are, Plague Reaper Striders. We're going from 147 defense. That is a hefty, hefty, hefty decrease. Down to 108. Set bonus, 25% reduced ammo usage and 5% increased flight time. Enemies receive 10% more damage from ranged projectiles when afflicted by the plague. Getting hit causes plague cinders to rain from above. Holy guacamole. Well, there's one thing that this new armor, the Plague Reaper armor, does have going for it, and that is ranged damage. We go ahead and use any of the Reaver armor. We've got 134. With that, we've got 161. With Plague Reaper, we have 176. That's hefty. That was the worst attempt yet. Like, there's not even any denying that. Oh, for God's sake, the projectiles again. Sodding hell, man. How are you supposed to avoid that, man? This is the worst bullet hell boss I've come across yet. I have no issues with saying that. With this Plague Reaper armor, yes, we are immune to the plague, but we have significantly reduced life. Ugh. Come on, Craig. Figure it out. Figure it out. I am going to keep on with a bunch of off-camera attempts if I so manage to do this. Amazing. I will, of course, show you guys the fight, should I manage to do it. But, uh, yeah, we're going to keep on with some more attempts, and I'm going full concentration mode. I apologize, but sometimes I just can't focus on commentating over fights. <laughs> so close. So, so so close. Man, holy crap. Oh, there we have it, my friends. And that was with the Plague Reaper armor. You just got to learn the AI. I feel like I say that after every difficult modded boss battle. You just got to learn the AI. 
When it comes to him shooting out all of those rockets in a spread, dash the other way and you can literally avoid the spread. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, I know, it sounds easy, doesn't it? But when you're in the midst of it, your brain is like going 10 to the dozen and you start forgetting even the most basic things. Like honestly, if you were to genuinely ask what my name was during that boss fight, I couldn't tell you because I'm just too busy trying to friggin' concentrate, man. I'm sure you guys are the same. Well, at least some of you folks, anyway. We've not done bad, have we? Plague bringer Goliath relic. We done did it. So let's go and place this bad boy down. Yeah, baby. Oh, wait. So moving on. We have ourselves the law, of course. An innocent queen forced to bear an agonizing existence. This is nothing short of a crime against nature. Without consulting me, Drayden sought to weaponize the already well-organized jungle bees. When he revealed his finished project, I was enraged. Enslaving the bees was despicable. Drayden cared little for my outrage and returned to his other work without further incident. From that point on, I stopped making requests of Drayden. He had shown me his true colors. In my later days, I was far from virtuous, but I would not shackle a creature to fight in my name. That would make me no better than the defined scoundrels I pursued. Ho oh, ho ho. Yeah, sounds like they're getting pretty peeved off with uh, Drayden there, eh? So, ladies and gentlemen, opening this thing up, if we have the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah! Yeah, let's go, man! We got the friggin' mask on the first roll, dudes! Come on, that is pretty amazing, isn't it? We got a diseased joystick from the Calamity Vanities mod. Plague containment bricks. We've got the plague staff. A malevolence. 113 range damage. Oh my goodness me. Fires two arrows at once. Converts wooden arrows into plague arrows that explode into bees on death. Yo, that sounds pretty cool, actually. Uh, Deadly the Hive. This is also a ranged weapon. Oh, nice. Okay, very good. Check this out as well, my friends. The Exalted Oath Blade. We can actually make this now. Wow. 235 melee damage, but of course, that's without melee buffs, eh? Requires the Forbidden Oath Blade, a Broken Hero Sword, Ashes of Calamity, and the Infected Armor Plating. Fires a spread of demonic scythes and critical hits cause shadow flame explosions. Good God. So check this out, my friends. It actually turns out the Hive is a rocket launcher. It launches a variety of rockets that explode into bees on death. Yes. Yes. We've got a lot of B things going on here. That sounds like my kind of weapon. Uh, but check this out as well. We can actually make ourselves endless rocket bags as part of the Fargo's mod. And check it out. There we are. Rocket 3s. Let's make sure we've got the best price. We do. We need to buy 3,996 of these to be able to make ourselves the pouch. I wonder if we could reforge it as well. Rather similar to the uh, endless chlorified pouch. Shouldn't be able to do that in my opinion. Seems a little bit weird. Maybe even a tiny bit overpowered. But... Uh, if it's in the game, then, uh, yeah. It's weird. Sometimes I click, it doesn't do it. And then sometimes it does. It's very weird. It's really annoying. Okay, there we are. I actually went in that time. Good Lord. All right. Well, there we are. Unreal. Love to see it. And, uh, yeah, my friends, we now have an Unreal Hive. I'm looking forward to trying this thing out, my friends. So here we are. This is the first step for the eventual Exalted Oath Blade. We need to get ourselves the Forbidden Oath Blade. The Blade Crest Oath Sword is part of that, and we already have it. Souls of Fright, and then it's also going to be an Old Lord Claymore, gotten from Bone Serpents. We can make ourselves the Forbidden Oath Blade. Yeah. So then we need to have a quick whiz through the solar eclipse to get ourselves a broken hero sword. So bada bing bada boom. What I need is for this guy actually to come in. Yeah. 18,000 health is what he's got. Uh, I'm very interested to see what uh, the rocket launcher can do. Yeah. Uh, seems to be quite a lot actually that it can do. <laughs> so that, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. The Exalted Oath Blade. 220 melee damage and 25% crit chance. Okay, that's... Uh... <laughs> that does seem pretty amazing, actually. I feel the need to test this. Maybe we'll just test it against the dummies here, okay? So, uh, let's have a look. Oh, a lot going on, to be honest. 5,500? What about the rest of this stuff? Maybe if I do it like right in the middle here, we'll get the maximum amount of DPS. 
No, still about 5,000. What about the malevolence? Still about 5,500. Alright, well, maybe once we get a sort of proper melee loadout, maybe we'll fare better in terms of uh, DPS. It does turn out it's a material as well for the eventual Devil's Devastation. Requires Cosmolite Bars, Nightmare Fuel. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff going on here actually. So then, in terms of boss progression, the next boss is actually the Empress of Light. Oh man, am I not looking forward to that one. So according to the normal Terraria wiki, it turns out that the prismatic lace wings can spawn on pearl stone blocks. So if I was to head on in here, pearl stone blocks. Can you see where I'm heading with this? All right, large pearl stone platform has been placed down. So we skip it to nighttime. We make sure we've got a bug net on us. And now we play the waiting game. Yeah! Got him! All right, we got one of them, my friends. Very, very good. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. So, yep, yeah, there we are. First phase. Pretty typical. Yep, yeah, a little bit of a dashy dash. Usually it's the sun phase next, and it is. Okay. Interesting. Another dash. Gonna be a whole new slew of projectiles again. Yep, and now it's the lines. I mean, so far so good. Seems pretty typical. Not really noticing all that much difference compared to the normal vanilla boss. So, uh, yeah. Kind of interesting, I guess. Oh, God. Uh, what's going on? What's going on? Too many projectiles to speak of. Hmm. I still feel like... Oh, I still feel like maybe what we should be doing is rolling around with chlorophyte bullets, especially for this gal. Because uh, she kind of nasty, dude. Oh, you know what I was saying about knowing this gal's attacks? I'm not really doing a very good job of uh, showcasing that now, am I? Ah, jeez. <laughs> oh, God. It's the sun phase. Don't think I'll be able to get away from this one. Only a quarter down. Ah... Uh... Yeah, I need my guns back, man. Let's go for the Leviathan. We need to do that whole thing again. That was just awful. Ooh, one already. Nice one. Another one. Very good. So yeah, at least let's give her a proper go to finish off the episode, eh? Let's not fail miserably this time. Boosh. All right, this time we're going for the homing projectiles off the rip. Oh, yeah. Okay, so a little bit of that. Projectiles everywhere. It's going to be the dashy. Now it's going to be the sun phase. Yes. Wait, no. That's concerning. She just skipped the sun phase. Well, I say it's concerning, but actually, yeah, I kind of like it when she doesn't do the whole sun phase thing. <laughs> oh, good grief. Lots going on here, my friends. Already got a bit of adrenaline, though. So, uh, you know, can't complain about that, can we? Ooh. That is interesting. She seems to be dashing a lot more nowadays. Yeah, I think that's her death mode thing. She seems to switch her attacks way more often, and they actually seem to be randomized. I'm not noticing any particular pattern with her attacks like we would expect on vanilla. There's a lot going on, my friends. There's a lot going on. Yeah, sun phase again. Never mind. We can just about deal with the sun phase, can't we? All right. Keeping it going. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good grief. There's a lot going on. Come on. A third down. That's not too bad. Ah, okay. Interesting, interesting. We're almost dead here, folks. Almost dead. And it will not be a long amount of time before we are. Yeah, I'm just being a realist here. It's not going to be very long before I'm dead. Oh, good grief. Whoa. Okay. Okay. I've not seen that before. Okay, that's a spanking new attack, my friends. Truly haven't seen that before. Whoa. Has that now she gone a little bit of a different color? What the heck? Was that because I inflicted a debuff to her? I don't know. Oh, good grief. So much going on. So little time to react. <laughs> okay, lines again. She is switching her attack pattern like nobody's business, isn't she? I 
feel like her attacks are having no issues with keeping up with me, even despite what I think is pretty okay mobility. Oh god, this is it. I can't, I can't, I can't survive this. Wait. We actually just did. That is insane. How? In the name of all that is holy, did we just survive all that? Okay. If we do this first time, I'm going to be so surprised. No! <laughs> Things you hate to see. That. That. She had, what, maybe one-tenth health left? Before wrapping up, of course, we do have the comment of the day. Alan Babic says, After Moon Lord, you can free up one more accessory slot by putting the Seraph Traces in the Wing slot. Ah, now that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because, yeah, Seraph Traces. Let me just remind myself. Here they are. Oh. We've pretty much got everything. We just need to take down Moon Lord and get the Luminite Bars. And that's it. Uh-huh. And yeah, you're saying that you can put that in your wing slot? If so, then yeah, that's actually going to be really useful. We can have, essentially, another accessory slot, eh? Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so much for turning my attention to that. I do appreciate it. But yeah, my friends, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, despite my shortcomings at the end here, I mean, at the end of the day, we were only trying the boss out to see what kind of AI she has. And I'm glad we did that because now we know what to expect. Yeah. She changes her attacks very often, especially in second phase, and she also doesn't seem to have any specified attack pattern, not as far as I could figure out anyway. Obviously, if you guys do know of the attack pattern, then let me know in the comments area. But yeah, drop a like if you've enjoyed today's video, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future episodes, especially in the next one, where we're going to be hopefully taking down the Empress of Light. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for all of your wonderful support. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.